Hello, I am Dr. Ekaterini Klepusniotu and I'm a lecturer at the Institute of Psychological Sciences at the University of Leeds. Today I will be talking about magnetic resonance imaging or MRI and functional magnetic resonance imaging or fMRI. So magnetic resonance imaging or MRI uses a very powerful magnetic field to reconstruct an image of the body. What I will be focusing on will be the brain because that is my interest and my area of expertise. We've been studying the living brain since about the 1950s with Dr. Wilder Penfield, the founder of the Montreal Neurological Institute in Canada, being the pioneer in this area of research, um, when during surgery uh, for the removal of epileptic foci, in patients, he would uh, stimulate the brain slightly with electrodes and he would record what these stimulated areas of the brain would do, what was the function of those areas. Now, this type of surgery, surgery for the removal of epileptic foci, um, happens under local anesthesia because the neurosurgeon wants to know exactly what is going on in during the procedure and he wants the patient to be awake so the patient can respond to stimulation. And remember, the brain doesn't feel any pain, so local anesthesia works fine for that type of surgery. Since then though, we've come a long way in being able to study the living brain and understand how the brain works. Crucial in building um, MRI scanners has been the discovery of nuclear magnetic resonance in 1947 by Felix Bloch and Edward Purcell. They simultaneously discovered nuclear magnetic resonance and that discovery led to a Nobel Prize in physics in 1952. Paul Lauterbur introduced concepts necessary for making images in the 1970s and then Raymond Damadian constructed the first full-body MRI scanner in 1977. 